Hi there. Somehow my invitation to Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry got lost in the post. Not to worry, I'd already decided that I would be a homeschooled wizard, and so over the years I've been building a library of magical textbooks. Real books that contain information about magic and spells, beautiful artwork, and of course secret intelligence on magical creatures such as dragons and unicorns and goblins. I'm majoring in cryptozoology, don't you know? I intend to be fully prepared when that owl eventually turns up at my door. Seriously though, I get a lot of requests to do a bookshelf tour, but I've way too many books for that to be a viable option. So I thought I'd invite you along a little tour of one of my favourite and most magical shelves instead. Two quick warnings. Firstly, this isn't a Harry Potter collection tour. I have lots of books from the Potterverse, but they're on another shelf, and I can do a tour of that of another day if people are interested. And secondly, a social media stress reminder that I definitely cleaned up these shelves before I started filming. Don't forget that other people's pretty shelves are not a reflection of otherwise perfect lives. If you see any books you like, I've listed the best of them in the description box, and there's a link to a more detailed list on my website, but feel free to ask me any questions about the books in the comments section. Today's video will cover the first half of the bookshelf, and I'll upload the second half in the next few days. This first shelf is decorated with a couple of hammered pewter genie lamps. You can just see one of the fairy doors hiding at the back of the shelf. There's a wand, a magical inkwell and a glass nib for writing spells, a glass hand boiler and a small dragon trinket keeper. The first book here is the Element Encyclopedia of Magical Creatures by John and Caitlin Matthews. This is one of several books in a series of very comprehensive guides that cover magical creatures, fairies, spells and other such fun. The Isle of Grammarie by Jennifer Westwood is a beautiful vintage collection of magical poetry with illustrations by the talented Pauline Baines, who also famously illustrated the original Narnia and Lord of the Rings series. This is one of a vibrantly illustrated collection of books on unicorn lore, which include the official handbook of the Magical Unicorn Society, a collection of stories called A Brief History of Unicorns in the UK and The Golden Unicorn in the US, and a pretty colouring book. The next two books are part of a series of gorgeously illustrated treasuries of literature, lore, art, recipes and do-it-yourself projects on fairies, mermaids and unicorns. So far they've released the Fairies Handbook and the Mermaid Handbook, and I'll do a more in-depth review of these when the Unicorn Handbook's released later this year. This vintage collection of books here was put out by Hamish Hamilton in the 1960s and 70s, with each volume edited and illustrated by a leading children's writer or illustrator of the time. Each book contains short stories and excerpts from famous literature about dragons, giants, goblins, magical beasts, witches, wizards and other myths, legends and folklore. The second shelf I've decorated with my grumpy grimoire, a facsimile raven skull, a plasma ball and a couple of pewter goblets. The grimoire actually opens to reveal a hiding place for secrets that this lovely fellow is guarding for me. The raven skull is not real, it's actually a hand cast replica and naturally his name is Poe. I also have a replica human skull on another shelf called Bob, which will make sense to any of you who read the Harry Dresden books. The first book on this shelf is called Once Upon a Time and it's edited by Roger Lancel and Green. In fact, it's a gorgeous vintage book of fairy tales from around the world with stunning illustrations by the Czech artist Wojtek Kubasta. I love this book so much, I in fact have a few copies of it and the others are in my fairy tale shelves.
The Poppy Kettle Papers by Michael Lawrence follows the story of mythical ancient Peruvian gnomes, and it's delightfully illustrated by Robert Ingpen. Dream Birds by David Ogden is part of a larger series illustrated by Jody Bergsma and includes myths and legends of the coastal peoples of North America. The Fairy Spotter's Handbook is a whimsically illustrated guidebook that includes brief folk tales, sketches of various types of fairies and their habits, and tips for staying in their good graces. Shapeshifters by Adrian Mitchell contains stories recreated from Ovid's Metamorphoses, in which the Minotaur, King Midas, Arachne, Bacchus, Persephone and many more haunting figures walk the earth once more. The stunning illustrations are by Alan Lee, who also does some of the most wonderful contemporary Lord of the Rings illustrations as well. Dragons and Unicorns and Natural History by Paul and Karen Johnsgaard is a purportedly scientific look at dragons and unicorns. From the evolution and anatomy of dragons and unicorns to their own special skills. The title of this one's really fun. Goblin Proofing One's Chicken Coop by Reginald Bakley. It offers practical instructions to clear your home and garden of these unsettling inhabitants and how to banish them from your chicken coop and kitchen cupboard forever. The Witch's Guide to Cooking with Children by Keith McGowan is actually a storybook. It's a fun spin on the Hansel and Gretel tale, but I keep it here because I really love the title. Raising Unicorns by Jessica Marquis contains everything you need to know to make a good living as a unicorn farmer, from choosing the right breed to picking the unicorn farm management dream team. And actually, it's not a bad economics primer. The Box of Demons by Daniel Whelan is another storybook, kept in these shelves for the title, in which a young boy is plagued by a box containing three troublesome demons that he wants to return to hell. I've got the limited edition, which includes a special pop-up illustration by Chris Riddell. The Incomplete Book of Dragons by Cressida Cowell is a companion book in the How to Train Your Dragon series. The book shows pages taken from Viking Hero Hiccup's childhood dragon-watching notebooks. How to Raise and Keep a Dragon is a guide for dragon keepers, devoted to raising and keeping dragons, obviously. Siruelo's Book of the Dragon contains some really lush fantasy dragon artwork. Michael Haig's Unicorn Journal is a beautifully illustrated journal in which to keep your own unicorn observations when you're studying them in wizard class. The Illustrated Encyclopedia of Fairies by Anna Franklin is a comprehensive directory that provides a global, multi-ethnic, multicultural overview of fairies, large and small. A Field Guide to Little People by Nancy Arismis is a vintage guide to white ladies and red caps, church grims and hobgoblins, English fairies, leprechauns, sirens, hey hey men, and all of their strange and mythical kin. The Night of the Gargoyles by Eve Bunting is another children's storybook about what happens when gargoyles come alive after dark, and it's got some lovely charcoal illustrations by David Wiesner. The rest of this shelf holds a collection of Australian fairy books. 
I covered most of these in a separate video, which I'll link to below if you'd like a closer look, but I did want to flip through a couple that I didn't show in that video, such as this whimsical illustrated collection on the lives of Australian gnomes by Robert Ingpen. and also Fairyland by Ida Rentoul Althwaite, which is in the other video, but I just adore her exquisitely illustrated sprites and pixies, so it bears looking at multiple times. This third shelf starts with my Cottington Fairy Book Collection by Terry Jones and Brian Froud. In the early 1990s, the pair unearthed the Victorian diary of Lady Angelica Cottington and discovered that whereas other gentlewomen of her time pressed flowers between their diary pages, the young Lady Angelica pressed fairies. Or rather, the psychic impressions of fairies. I'll just do a quick flip through here, as there are several books in this delightful series. I love them all, and I think they deserve their own video to show them in more detail. This vintage Fairyland book's illustrated throughout by Mabel Lucy Atwell, as well as including colour plates by various artists. It's just a sweet collection of fairy tales and nursery rhymes. The Witchwood Fairies by Faye Durston is an enchantingly interactive fairy tale with removable postcards and notes, diary extracts and even fairy textiles. I love Cecily Mary Barker's Flower Fairies. I grew up with the Flower Fairy books and the Fairyopolis series is a new series exploring her world that features ephemera such as postcards and mini books and letters with tabs and lenticular illustrations and also even pop-ups. You may have noticed by now I have a slight obsession with books that have removable and interactive elements. If anyone's interested in a review of my collection of these sorts of books, do let me know in the comments. I've been collecting them for years. The Atlas of Monsters by Stuart Hill and Sandra Lawrence is a fun puzzle book, which includes a collection of lovely maps showing where in the world monsters from mythology and folklore can be found. The 
the next couple of French language books, which I'm including here anyway because some of the most fantastic fairy illustrators are only published in French. Celtic Fairies by Jean-Baptiste Monguet is a delightfully illustrated collection of fairies, gnomes, goblins, and other creatures from Anglo-Saxon and Celtic legends. Le Bille de Fabe by the wonderful Benjamin Lacombe and Sebastian Perez combines botanical correspondence, fairy characters, laser cut pages, and other wonders that explore Rasputin's research for an elixir of immortality. Back to books with English texts. Monsters and Legends by the Italian writer David Kelly is a delightful journey into the fearsome unknown worlds of dragons and vampires, yetis and gremlins, and their relation to more commonly found creatures that sparked the original legends. This oversized beauty by Edward Bracey is lavishly illustrated throughout by some of the world's best illustrators, including Arthur Rackham, Gustave Doré and Walter Crane. Each of the four seasons has particular celebrations and this book aims to bring some of the background to the various rituals and traditions of these times. Fantastic People by Alan Scott and Michael Scott Rowan is a celebration of fantasy characters from hundreds of years of myths and legends, tracing the origins of gnomes and goblins and elves and trolls and dragons. Again, the work of many classic illustrators is featured, including Arthur Rackham, Kay Nielsen, Edmund Dulac, as well as more contemporary artists. The text is minimal, but the illustrations are divine. This next one's one of my favourites. The Complete Encyclopedia of Elves, Goblins and Other Little Creatures by Pierre Dubois, illustrated by Claudine and Roland Sabatier. The first half of this volume is devoted to the various species of elves, creatures that flourish in both day and night, such as sylphs and selkies and will-o'-the-wisps, as well as more obscure species. The second half leads us through a vast variety of invisible and frightening creatures who haunt hollow and attic, forest and ocean. It's gorgeously illustrated and very comprehensive, although I do have to admit the translation from the original French is a bit sketchy. The same creative team is also responsible for the equally entrancing and lushly illustrated Great Encyclopedia of Fairies, which includes Fairies of the Hearth, Queens of the Middle World and Maidens of Green Kingdoms, among others. And another long-running vintage series of miniature books on the theme of flowers and fairies that I quite adore is the series by Margaret Tarrant and Marion St John Webb. There are volumes on fairies from forest, heath, house, insects, orchard, seashore, seed, twilight, water, and wild fruits.
These tiny books are part of the Dragonology Pocket Choose Your Own Adventures, a series I'll be covering in more depth in the next video. This series of The Ink Drinkers by Eric Sandvossin is also a set of storybooks, in this case covering the adventures of a vampire who's allergic to blood, so he drinks stories instead. The last couple of books hiding at the end of this shelf include a few small illustrated fairy story collections. The Fairy's Ring by Jane Yolen has some poetry and short stories. And this one by Tor Bringsavad contains a collection of stories about the hidden population of Norway's phantoms and fairies. Well, thanks so much for sticking around to watch my very detailed Wizards bookshelf tour. I hope there was something here you liked. I'll be putting the second half up soon, which includes my Folio Society books on folk and fairy lore, more stunning books illustrated by Brian Froud, and of course more books on gnomes, giants, mermaids, leprechauns, and other fantastic beasties from around the world. As I said earlier, if you're interested in building your own Wizards library, I've put links to most of the books in the description box, and there are always more details on my website as well. I'd love to know if anyone else has a homeschooled wizard library happening and what your favourite books are if you'd like to share in the comments below. Till next time, bye!